Ja, hier ist Chris, Victoria Pater Spiele. Wir sind immer noch in Essen auf der Messe 2018 und ich sitze jetzt hier bei Harry Rowland vom Australian Design Group. Nice and to meet you. Hello. hello, and um, we want to talk a bit uh, about World in Flames uh -huh. and about the Australian Design Group in general. Okay. And um, when I when I think of, of World in Flames, it is um, from from my starting days uh, as a gamer. Uh, I always uh, saw World in Flames in shops, in in, in catalogs, and it was always a game I would love uh, uh -huh. to play. But it was always uh, also a game uh, of which I knew. It has uh, it's long, it's, it's really long going, and I have to uh, have to have a room uh, to, to, to yes yes yes, yes. Where, where it can stand, it yes. can stay uh, to, to be played on and on yes, yes. and uh, but but maybe you can tell uh, about the start of the game in 1985 I think yeah yes? that's right first uh, edition was yes 1985. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we originally had done Empires in Arms, which was a game I designed when I was 13 years old. And then our gaming group started playing it when I was about 21, 22. And then uh, within a year or so, we thought this is a pretty good game. So um, we decided to publish it and that became very successful. So when that came out in 83, Greg and I, who were the designers of World in Flames, uh, decided uh, we wanted to um, do a new game. And I'd been working on uh, a World War II game since I was a kid as well. Uh, I'd seen War in the East and War in the West uh, um, uh, and I'd played them, Fire in the East, sorry, and Fire in the West, um, but I'd always thought it could be done more. And so Greg was interested in doing a World War II game, so we just started working on it in 83 and we published the first edition in 1985. Okay, yes. And it became an instant hit, pretty much. Um, We won the Game of the Year in 1986, State of the Art Award, uh, Best 20th Century Game, and um, the sales just rocketed. Uh, we produced five editions by 1989, and the sixth edition was in 1996, the seventh edition 2003, and now this is the eighth edition in 2018. And in total, we've now sold 60,000 copies of the game, 50,000 of the follow-on games, American Flames, Days Decision, and Pattern in Flames, okay. and 120,000 copies of the kits. Okay, that's quite a lot for, for it, a game like... Um, yeah, for such a massive. For such a it's, game, it's, yeah. We've produced eight games in total, but uh, this has been by far our most successful, and it's by far our most complex. So I don't know why that is. People find it a challenge, I think. Maybe, yes. It's always, uh, as I said, it was always a game I would love to play mm. one day. And so I, I think uh, the time is getting here to play it, but uh, let's see. Let's I think right. it's the last of the monster games. I, I think so, yes. Because um, people have uh, less time these days, yes. and as you say, the space is huge. Uh, we're going for the Guinness Book of Records for the world's biggest game, and You know that, that requires a fair bit of space. Yes. But it's, uh, it's also scenario based. I can, I can oh, play yes. it scenario wise. Yes, there's 22 campaigns. Yes. Uh, from a small one to five turn uh, Battle of France, 1940, just uses a few counters and one little part of the map, uh, to um, Russian campaign, North Africa campaign, Battle of the Atlantic, um, um, right up to the full length of the thing, which is all of this, um, which takes about 150 hours to play, 1939 to 1945. Massive. Massive, really, really yes. Huge, really huge. And um, the campaign, from uh, what uh, playing time do they start? The campaigns are from one hour for the Battle of France to three hours for the Russian campaign, just Russia, uh, three or four hours for the North African campaign, uh, same time for the Battle of the Atlantic D-Day campaign. If you wanted to play the entire Europe, it's probably getting up to 40 or 50 hours. Okay. And the, the, uh, the war in the Pacific's probably 30 hours. And as I say, the full one's between 100 and 150 hours. Okay. 
And with the eighth edition just just released, I think. Yes. It's, 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 and released April 2018. April 2018. Okay, it's really new. But there are three uh, three editions which I can choose from when I buy it. Right. It's, there's uh, two editions: two the classic editions. and the deluxe. Yes. And there's four modules: the ah, okay. so divisions in flames, territories in flames, ships in flames, and planes in flames. Okay. So. So I can uh, get this complex game more, even more complex and even longer. Yes, yes if so. you really want to. <laughs> okay. When too much is just not enough. The basic game has got 1,600 counters, and that's got all the basic cores, air forces, and naval units. And the expansion includes another 3,200 counters. Wow. So 4,800 in total. Okay. Oh, and in fact, an extra 100 freebie, so 4,900. Okay. Wow, that's really and uh, did you ever um, have, have the idea to, to uh, put, a, put out a reduced edition for, for the, um, to, to get more, more copies sold? Or? Well, we do have a version called With Blitz, yeah. which is a one map game licensed to Compass Games, and it only has a couple of hundred counters and one map, and it's playable in just a few hours. Okay. But it's at army group level, not core level. But it uses uh, similar mechanics as uh, what it uh, it's, it's somewhat changed, it's simplified mechanics. Yeah. So it's more simple with um, naval air and sea, uh, naval air and land combat than World, World in Flames is. Okay. And uh, the other project you had uh, over the years in your company was Seven Ages was another big one, I yes. think. Yes, yes. Um, it, it is a history of the world game. It's a historic spiel, not a Krieg spiel. Yeah. You don't win by crushing people. You win by getting glory points. And you get glory points by cultural, religious, and scientific advances. Okay. Uh, we brought that out in 2008. And I've been meaning to do a second edition and extra modules for it for a few years now. And in fact, some people have come to this convention at Essen every year saying, uh, when's Seven Ages 2 coming out? And I say, oh, next year. They say, just like you said last year, the year before that, the year before that. And it is true, I had no idea that the 8th edition, the collector's edition of World of Flames would take 10 years. Uh, and, I, and I've always meant to go on to Seven Ages because it's a much more accessible game. Yeah, okay. It's only got two maps, so it's still big, but it's less than half the size. And it's only got 800 or 900 counters or so it's um maybe a bit more maybe a thousand i can't remember the exact number it's mostly five eight inch so they're larger counters and there's less of them but it's much much simpler it's 10 pages of rules rather than 96 pages of rules so much more accessible and we've had a lot of interest now for that and as well as bringing out a second edition we're bringing out three modules for it a modern an ancient and a religious module so it again allows people to mix and match and the modules are totally playable with the first edition of Seven Ages. Okay, that sounds interesting too. And when do you think that will be released? We're aiming for October next year yes. for Spieler 2019, but uh, we only bring them out when they're ready. Yes. We don't just rush them into production. So uh, it may end up being a bit longer than that, but at the very least, by Spieler 2019, we should have prototypes available and so people can see and um, you know can advance order. We're going to also run it as a Kickstarter campaign, okay. like we did with World in Flames. Okay. And um, uh, do you think uh, those, uh, those monster games still have a, still have a future in the, in the wargaming world or, or will, it, uh, would it, will it stay with this one as the last one that's I still think, going? I think World in Flames will be the last truly monster game. I, I um, as I said, it's got 4,900 counters. Uh, it has a lot of rules. The rules are fairly simple, but there's still a lot of rules to remember. And so I think games are heading towards a more simpler design. Um, I don't really consider Seven Ages such a monster game because for starters, to play the whole game takes a lot less time. It's, um, if you go from the first age to the seventh age, it's maybe 15 hours as opposed to 150. And of course you could play just a one age, which is just a couple of hours. So you can easily play it at night. And the, the game, as you know, don't know, is designed deliberately so you can stop any time. You basically get glory points. And if you say, okay, we're gonna play just tonight, then at 10 o'clock, whoever's got the most glory points wins. Okay, yeah. So it's easy to, um, it's much easier to set up. In fact, because you don't start with any counters on the map, to set up the game takes 30 seconds. You plonk out the two maps, 
and that's it. You draw seven cards, you start playing your first card. So it's really quick um, set up as opposed to one of these monster games. But no, World of Flames will be the last monster game I ever do. Okay. But, but it's quite, uh, you, you are still uh, developing it? Or, or do you think that it, it, this, the eight, this is a definitive edition and will stay with it? No, this is, this is it. This yeah. is it. It took me 10 years to do this. Yeah, People okay. have said, oh, yes. I mean, admittedly, our last edition was called the final edition. And so yeah. some people have mockingly called it the this time we mean it final edition. Okay. But it, it really is. It took 10 years. I'm now 60. Uh, I don't have 10 years left in me to do it. I still want to do one more uh, really good game that I've been thinking of for a while. Yeah. Uh, started work on it originally about 20 years ago. Uh, but World in Flames and Seven Ages and others have um, taken up the time. Uh, that's an ancient Roman game between uh, the rise of Rome. Rome, Carthage, Macedon, Ptolemaics and Seleucids. And that's coming after, well, we're, we're going to do, the, the, the schedule is hopefully Seven Ages next year, Empires in Arms 3 the year after. We have the rights back from Hasbro for that. Uh, and then... Um, the Rise of Rome game in hopefully 2021 or 2022. Okay, that sounds really, really great. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. But, but definitely for World in Flames, we'll, yeah. we'll do a magazine. We're going to do a magazine. We do an annual for every edition, yeah. which gives you strategies and setups and all that sort of stuff. So we will do that. We're going to continue updating the rules as necessary with Arata, yes, okay. and that's all freely downloadable from our site, uh, from our website. But no more actual development. This is it as far as development okay. goes. So I think that was really interesting what you told, told us, and um, I really thank you for your time. No worries. Um, okay. And thank you, Christoph. Nice, okay. nice to meet you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank um, you. Ja, und ich hoffe für euch war es auch interessant. Und dann würde ich sagen an dieser Stelle bis zum nächsten Mal. Besten Dank und tschüss. <lacht>